Hi, it's Matt. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. This is a bottle ink on a tulip poplar sapling. I got photos of this guy at a nearby field and there was a little tulip poplar sapling growing up next to the field and this guy came out and was calling one spring and it was just such a pretty sight that I wanted to paint this for a while and it finally got to the top of my paintings to do list. And this is a small painting, it's only 7 by 10 inches, but it was a lot of fun to work on. So on this painting I wanted to have a really even smooth gradation on the back. Whenever I want to have a smooth gradation that's in lighter in tone, I usually go with a wet on wet wash. By pre-wetting the paper and making sure it's very evenly wet, you can then flow in your wash and the water then carries that over the page very evenly. I always tilt the page and then let gravity suck the colors down and it will bring those paints down toward the bottom of the page. I always go with my lightest colors for my gradation at the top and then I go to the darker tones at the bottom because as that water carries it downhill with the tilted page, it tends to leave the darkest tones at the bottom. It tends to puddle up in those areas. and. This way, if your darkest tones will end up where you want them to be. Sometimes you'll have a bit of puddling at the bottom of the page, and what I will do is then just take a piece of pa tissue paper and then suck off the extra water so it isn't puddling as much in those places. In this painting, I wanted to have some faked-in foliage at the bottom, very blurry and soft focus. So while that page was still nice and wet, I brought in some more of my pre-mixed greens, and I started dropping those in at the bottom of the page. Because the paper's really wet still, it's going to carry those along with the uh, capillary action. It's going to just kind of suck those across the page as it dries up, and it'll end up being a nice out-of-focus series of colors. So you rely on the wet page for carrying those around and blurring them up. So you don't have to be very accurate. In this case, I knew where I wanted some of my darks behind some of the, the leaves. And as it starts drying, I brought in a little bit more linear approaches to look more like branches and things like that. But mostly you're relying on that wet of the page to do some of your blurring work for you. And this is really fun to do. For some of the really dark areas, I brought in some purples and things to kind of let that move around the page. There are a couple areas where it was a little dark, so I sucked those off with a dry paintbrush. And you can see here, I'm starting to bring in some other tones. As, and the paper's starting to lose the sheen, so you know it's drying out. So I'm doing some forced little back runs where you drop in the color and it'll push it off to the edge as it dries up. And again, here I'm just sucking off some extra color that was on those washy areas satisfied with it, I hit it with the hairdryer to lock in the colors and then started removing the frisket so I have the white of the page. And then I transferred the rest of my sketch over using a folding bone and some tracing paper. And you can see a little bit of the original photo that I had up in the back of the upper left hand corner of the painting. It didn't have the kind of transition from the foliage at the bottom to the background. So I put some of that in just to suggest that there is more stuff at the bottom working its way to the top. And once I had the sketch in, my goal was to cover the page as soon as I could, get in the lightest local colors of those leaves and the bird itself and the branch. These were done with, uh, I think a lot of this was a number two brush.
again, I'm using some of the same tones that I used for the uh, wash, and then I blocked in some of the bird quickly with some grays. I didn't use any, you know, black on the bird. I, I mixed some purples and browns and things like that to get the, the birdy colors. And so I'm glazing in with a lot of colors here. And these leaves had some interesting qualities to the tulip poplar leaves. The bottom sides were more light blue-green, and then the tops were more yellow-green. And so I reflected that in the background, and I made some of the... I had some more yellowy greens toward the top, and then I had some more of the more blue-greens towards the bottom. So it would reflect both of those colors and ideally work well with it. That was something that my photo reference that I took didn't have. It was just kind of this even yellowy green kind of background. And you can see that when I work on these, I think there's a tendency to want to work on one area of a painting and, you know, work your way across. I like hopping around the page, working a little here, working a little there. And I think the main reason is that I, you end up with a more cohesive painting, at least I do, because you're using some of the tones on this side of the page that you use on the other. You make sure that all the details brought up to the same level. You don't lose the energy to work on the painting. Sometimes uh, I'll see people that start painting and they, well, I start with the eyes and they work, you know, for me, that's like eating dessert first. It, I'd lose the enthusiasm for the painting if I did all those little details first and then you had all these leaves to paint around later. By kind of bringing the painting together as a whole and saving the details for last, I think you end up with a, a stronger painting on the whole. At least I do. One of the things I liked about the painting, late in the painting, was that I knew that I was going to have this nice contrast of this very dark bird against that nice light yellow-green and minty-green kind of color. And that never came to be early on. You kind of had to wait to do some of those darks. And the reason you had to wait for doing some of those darks was that if you paint all those darks first, it tends to bleed off the page. So you have to wait for your darkest tones with watercolor till later in the painting. So I had to rely on the fact that those are going to be darker later. It's going to make sense later, but I had to wait for those. If this were acrylic or oil, you could put those in right at the beginning and it would have been fine. But with watercolor, it's a different beast and you have to approach the problems according to its rules. Lots of tiny details at this point. I think almost everything from here out was with a uh, little 10 aught brushes or, you know, really sharp number two round brushes. So there you go. That's the 7 by 10 inch painting of a bobolink. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment.